I think they've got their eye on somebody who's currently in the Democratic <laughs> primary and are grooming her to be the third party candidate. Mm -hmm. She's a favorite of the Russians. They have a bunch of sites and bots and other ways of supporting her mm -hmm. so far. And that's assuming Jill Stein will give it up, which she might not, because she's also a Russian right. uh, asset. Agent, yeah. yeah, she's a Russian asset. I mean, totally. All right. Well, that was the comments that sparked so much controversy and it really hit home with Tulsi Gabbard. Her name was brought up. So let's bring in Tulsi Gabbard, the congresswoman from Hawaii and Democratic presidential candidate. Congresswoman, uh, it's always great to see you. Um, I know you're working hard Morning. on the campaign. Morning. But this is something that happened months ago. Why is now the time to act? Uh, look, I love my country. After the attacks on 9-11, like so many Americans, I made the decision to enlist in the Army National Guard, to put my life on the line to protect the safety, security, and freedom of our country. I've done so now for almost 17 years that I've been serving in uniform, deployed twice to the Middle East, and also serve as a member of Congress now for seven going on eight years, having served on the armed services, foreign affairs, homeland security committees. I have dedicated my entire adult life to serving our country. And for Hillary Clinton and her powerful allies to attempt to smear me and accuse me, really implying that I'm a traitor to the country that I love, is something that I cannot allow to go unchecked. I'm filing this lawsuit because I will not allow her or anyone to try to intimidate me or other patriotic Americans mm -hmm. into silence. Well, um, a couple of questions. I don't think she used your name directly. I know she did refer to Jill Stein as an, a Russian asset. But how, how are you damaged $50 million worth? And how are you going to prove actual malice? Uh, look, I'll, get, I'll let the lawyers argue the details of that. All of the details are in the lawsuit. Once again, uh, this is a clear attempt to try to intimidate and silence those like me who are speaking out, who are being critical of the policies that she has had, the legacy of, of warmongering and taking our country into unnecessary, stupid, wasteful regime change wars, unnecessarily sending my brothers and sisters into harm's way, my brothers and sisters in uniform, speaking out against this uh, this foreign policy establishment is something that uh, she clearly doesn't like, which is why she's attempting to do all she can to try to smear my reputation and undermine my campaign. What do you say to the critics who say she's eighth, ninth in the polls, depending on the poll you look at, she's doing this just to stay relevant? I'm an American. I love my country. I will not allow this kind of blatant smear tactics to go unchecked. That's what this is about. But how has she damaged you $50 million? Again, you can look at the details that are in the lawsuit. I'll I let mean, the did, lawyers, right. did, have you I'll, lost, I'll let the have lawyers you lost, argue can, that. Uh, have you lost $50, uh, $50 million worth of campaign uh, th contributions? This is really what... What, what is at the heart of what we're talking about here is an attempt to uh, uh, suppress freedom of speech, right. the freedom of Americans like myself who are calling out and, and being very uh, honest about the damage that policies that Hillary Clinton and others have wielded in positions of great leadership and power in this country. Uh, for her to be able to use her position to essentially imply that I am a traitor to the nation that I love cannot go unchecked. Because if she can do it to me, mm -hmm. and if her powerful allies can do it to me, they can do it to anyone. You want to hold her accountable. Why do you think she did this in the first place? Did you all have a history? Uh, again, you can you can look at look at the the record uh, of of what happened after I announced that I would resign from the DNC and I endorsed Bernie Sanders back in 2016. That's probably uh, it. <laughs> you can look at you can look at uh, the long history that I've had throughout my seven years in Congress in speaking out and calling for an end to regime change wars, an end to these wasteful, stupid wars, uh, speaking out strongly, an, an end to this new Cold War and nuclear arms race, and really right. speaking to the kind of leadership that I'll bring as president to redirect our taxpayer dollars towards actually serving the needs of our people here at home. Right. So uh, she takes a shot at you. You're suing her. But meanwhile, looming straight ahead is Iowa. 
Uh, Tulsi, what do you need in Iowa to keep your campaign going, at least to New Hampshire? What's the percentage? What's the vote total? I'm here in New Hampshire now. We're focusing. Uh, I'll be here in New Hampshire pretty much throughout uh, the next few weeks as we head to the so New Hampshire primary. So you kind of give it up, Iowa? And, and, and we're looking forward to, uh, to uh, a good outcome here. In New Hampshire. So kind of giving up on Iowa. In New Hampshire, your average is 4.5 percent. You're about eighth uh, on the chart. What do you need to survive? If you're going to bypass basically Iowa and go to New Hampshire, what do you need out of New Hampshire to keep momentum going? Again, we'll see what happens on Election Day. I'm really enjoying and appreciating the opportunity to spend this time with New Hampshire voters. Uh, polls are showing all different numbers. I'm really mm -hmm. focused on the voters here in New Hampshire who've got a very important decision ahead of them. Great. As you go out and you canvass the country talking to voters uh, about this next presidential election, uh, given the fact that Washington is all about impeachment, how often, Tulsi Gabbard, does somebody say, hey, uh, I care about it, or are they more interested in bread and butter issues? Very rarely does the issue of impeachment come up. The issues that are coming up here in New Hampshire especially are issues like the opioid crisis that is still devastating so many families, that is costing families and communities so much. Issues come up related to education. Uh, issues come up related to our country's national security and, and the sacrifices being made by our men and women in uniform. Uh, health care, immigration, the economy. There are so many different issues that come up on a daily basis right. through the town halls that we are having here. And, and these are the kinds of discussions that I think are really important that we should be having. Do you resent Tom Steyer and Mike Bloomberg spending their way to success in a lot of these areas? Bloomberg is now fourth in a lot of polls nationally. Tom Steyer is uh, as a factor in Nevada and South Carolina. How do you feel about them using their own resources and kind of making themselves relevant? I'm focusing on my campaign and the people-powered campaign we have. I take no money from PACs or lobbyists or corporations, and uh, it, it's an incredible and, and inspiring thing to see how many people are rising up to the occasion to invest uh, in our future, because this is, this is really, it's not about me, it's about the future of our country and, and Americans from across party lines, from across backgrounds and walks of life coming together to stand up working side by side to usher in that bright new future with peace and opportunity and freedom for every single American. All right, Tulsi, thank you so much. We wish you the best. Thank you for serving our country. Thank you. You're welcome.